I'm saying hi as y'all are jumping on. I'm saying hello. It's live at five. Live at five. Live at five. No, it's not Friday, but it's live at five. Live at five. Live at five. Come on in here and talk to me. Come on in here. Y'all better come on up in here. Hey, do me a favor. Invite someone. I have some really um, good nuggets for you for the new year. And sorry, it's taken me a couple of days, but I'm here. I am here on the sixth day. I'm here for it. I cannot wait. You guys are jumping on really fast today. Come on, invite someone in. I'm going to wait. I'm going to give you time this year because normally I just get to go when um, people say they miss rewatch and hey Shaniqua hey Kashabra hey Steven hey Tiandria how are you I'm so excited to see you guys hey Candice hello Elton Taylor how are you everybody just jump I mean if you can get anybody on here look Elder Elton is already excited he is already sending hearts he doesn't know what I'm gonna say but he's already excited I love the excitement it's the first live from Cynthia Diggs in the year of 2020. So here we go. Let's do it. Let's do it. I received so many messages saying, where's the live at five on the first Friday of the year? And I was unable to do so. I did promise you guys, this is the third year. Come on, send me some hearts. Send me hearts. This is the third year for live at five. And I'm so thankful. Obviously, it's become a trend because I noticed others have began to have lives at the same time of the week or the day. And I think it's absolutely wonderful. God's giving you something to say. If he's giving you a platform, if he's giving you um, anything to share with someone that's positive. Hello, Pastor Tori, how are you? Hey, Julia, how are my children doing today? Where's my Ava? Tell Ava, Aunt Cindy is on live at five. And so, yes, it's not only a new year, it's a whole new um, decade that we get to experience. And I'm so very glad about it. Listen, last year is gone. We can stop talking about last year. Last year is gone. God has allowed us to see 2020, um, the year that many of us thought we would never, ever see. For that alone, we owe God a praise. Come on, let's give him praise. Come on, just for letting us see 2020. Let's give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, and we bless your name. We've already had the first Sunday of the year, so I'm sure you've already gone in. You've already heard your word. We've had our watch night and all of that. And now I'm ready to move forward, and let's talk about not just a happy new year, but let's talk about a happy new you. I want to talk about you. I want to really talk about other people. I want to talk about you. I want to talk about what will make you have a better year. Well, first of all, happy new year is no good if you have the same old mentality or a sad old you or a mad old you. All things are new. According to Isaiah 43 and 19, the Lord himself tells us, behold, I'm doing a new thing. Don't you perceive it? Come on, ask somebody. Don't you see it? He's doing a new thing. He's given you a whole new year. I don't know about you, but I'm glad about it. Last year had its share of challenges, not just for me, but for you, for the world. We were challenged on every side, but God is so great. Somebody call him great. He is great. He's an awesome God. He's a wonderful redeemer. He allowed us to get out of all of that. But if the truth be told, some of us are in a new year with the same stuff. Ouch. Somebody say, ouch, that hurt. If you are in a new year, in a new decade, in a new dispensation, and you're carrying the same stuff, you might as well go on back to 2019. You might as well go on back to 2000. You might as well go on back to 1999 because we are in a whole new era. You're going to have to let all that other stuff go. Jesus, that's right. He kept me. God kept me so I wouldn't let go. Let's talk about what will help us have a better new us. Come on, tell yourself, 
Happy new me. It's not just a new year. You're going to have to learn how to do things to help make you better. You're going to have to start today. Because if the truth be told, a lot of us go to watch night services and we buck and dance and we shout and we wake up the next morning and we're laying, living in the same stuff. I want us to focus on new. I want us to start living the way the word of God has um, set up for us to live. And so I, I'm, I'm giving you nuggets today and it might be a moment. Yeah, it's my first one. You guys bear with me. Some people will drop off because all they want to hear is you get a house, you get a house, you get a car, you get a car. I don't have that today. And so if you're just looking for a quick fix and, 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 a, and a quick strategy to get out of what you're in, this live is not for you. So come on, tell the people that you are inviting that this may not be for you, but it would be good if you would bring the ones in that you know um, have a plan, strategies, strong minds that really want to do things better than ever before. So I wrote out the word happy new you. And with every letter, God gave me something that will help us all. Let's get started. If you're ready, just say, let's get started. The H stands for have a plan. We cannot continue to go through life willy nilly without a plan. There is nothing obtained that is worth something without a plan. Tell somebody you need a plan. You need a plan. You need a list of steps with details that will help you reach your objective. So the H in Happy New You stands for have a plan. A plan for what? I'm glad you ask. Whatever it is you want to obtain, you need a plan. You don't just get a new car by just showing up. You need a plan. You don't buy a house without a plan. You don't get a job without a plan. You don't get a better body without a plan. So in order to be a better you, you need to have a plan. Your plan may not be like mine and mine may not be like yours, but it will be tailor made to your need to help you reach your objective. So in order to have a happy 2020, the H stands for have a plan. The A stands for apply it. You have to apply what you planned. It doesn't do any good to walk around with a beautiful planner. And I have a beautiful 2020 Christian planner, which I'm going to talk to you about in just a moment. It does no good to have a plan and not apply the plan. Many of us have desires and goals and aspirations, and we can we can literally see it, almost touch it, but we don't apply that that we know. We don't apply what we hear. We go to church Sunday after Sunday. We um, hear a word every single time we go into the house of the Lord, but yet we do not apply what we've heard from the men and women of God. This is the year that we will stop listening and learn to apply. We've got to add applying to listening. It doesn't do any good to go to the house of the Lord with your word open, with your app open, and they're giving you biblical principles, but yet you won't apply. Somebody say, ouch, this is not your normal buck and dance. This is not your normal three-step. This is not your normal clap it out. This is talking about you becoming a better you. So you need to have H. You need to have a plan. You need A, apply your plan. The P, you need to learn how to pray. Let me tell you what's wrong with the world today. People do not pray. We don't pray. No, we don't. No, I don't care what we say. We don't pray because the Bible says if we would, which if is a stipulation, if. He says, if my people. Y'all know the, the scripture, if my people who are called by my name, and there's so many prerequisites to that. There are so many instructions that if we would seek his face, if we would turn from our wicked ways, if we would. But the main one I like is pray. 
We only want to talk to God when we want something. Shame on us. Come on, go ahead and shake it off. Say shame on me. If that was you last year and you only approached God's throne when you wanted something, when you needed something, whether it was for you or for someone else, let that go. Stop doing him like that. He's not a sugar daddy. He's not a magician. He's God. God, the maker and creator of all mankind. And so in order to be a better you, you're going to have to talk to him on a regular basis. I promise you, those that are in intimate relationships or those that desire an intimate relationship, those that love their boo and y'all boo the Dude, oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. Let me get back to where I was. You talk to them as often as you can. You love to hear their voice. You love to be in their presence. When I was dating, I used to fall asleep with that man talking to me. We would fall asleep on the phone. Wasn't talking about nothing. I just wanted to hear his breath on the other line. I just wanted to know he was there. What more do you think our Savior wants from us, the one that made us, the one that called us, the one that keeps us? Don't you know he wants to talk to us every single day? Don't you know he wants to hear from you? Not just when you're in a crisis situation. Listen, if we can do that for human beings, What's wrong with us not talking to the Lord every day? We run to him when we want something, when we need something, when we're at the end of our road. But he should be the first resort and not the last person that we call on. So H, have a plan. And then you need to apply your plan. And then we need to learn to pray daily. But then we need to practice what we preach. Tell somebody H-A-P-P. -P. We're almost happy, but before we can get to that why, we need to talk about learning to practice what we preach. I didn't say that you were a preacher. Everybody not a preacher, but everybody is a witness. If you have accepted the Lord into your life, if you have told him he is the Lord of your life, you are a person of influence. And so you need to be practicing what you preach. What am I saying? You can't be an effective witness if you are not living what you're saying. Lord, where's my, I need something to drink. Where's my water bottle, Lord Jesus? Because I get happy. I get happy when I start talking about helping me be a better me. This is not just for y'all. This is for Cindy too. I'm applying every principle that that God gave to me. And so we need to learn to practice what we preach. Stop telling people what to do when you don't do it yourself. Many of us don't mind giving instructions as long as we don't have to follow up. One moment. We can tell everybody else what to do. We in everybody else's house. We tell them how to raise their children. We tell them what kind of relationships they need to have. We tell them what kind of food they need to eat, what church they need to attend. But guess what? We out here doing whatever we want. We talk about people that are sleeping around, but yet we have skeletons falling out of our closets. We talk about people that are overeating and we do whatever chance we get. We talk about people who don't go to church and we step into the building when we get ready. We talk about bickering, arguing, jealousy. We talk about all these things, supporting, not receiving support. And yet we don't do any of those things ourselves. We're selfish. We're pious. We're arrogant. Oh, did I hurt somebody's feelings? Oh, it looks like the number just went down too. I think we dropped two people. That's okay. Maybe you're the one. You're an influencer. And even when you hear the word and you don't apply it, you are um, guilty. 
Because mm-hmm. the Bible said it's better not to even hear it than to hear it and not apply it. Oh, good Lord. Happy 2020, y'all. I told y'all I was going to be on fire this year because I've been through um, so much. And now I just want a better life, not just for me, but also for you. And so God is so mindful of us. He gives us practical points. He gives us things that will help us. The word of God will never, ever, ever, ever fade away. And so practice what you preach. We have a savior that practiced giving, loving, healing. He practiced it on a daily basis. He didn't let the world dictate to him, but he told the world to conform to him. And that's how I want to be. Don't you want to be more like the Lord? Don't you want to have a better relationship with him? This is the only way you're going to be a better you. And so H is for have a plan. Tell somebody, have a plan, and then you need to apply that plan, and then you need to pray on a daily basis, and not just once. Talk to him often, as often as you can. Sometimes I'm driving in my car, and I'm going back, but I'm kind of move forward, and I'm just, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I bless you. I'm so appreciative for a brand new day. Thank you for keeping me safe from point A to B. Lord, I just want you to be in my day today because I can't do anything without you. And I'll go the whole day just telling him who he is. You are God and God alone. You are omnipresent. You are majestic. You are holy. And I'm not asking him for anything. And so guess what? When it gets to a point where I have a need, like my heart is broken, like I'm having trouble sleeping, like I can't pay a bill, I'm I'm rubbing two nickels together, trying to make a call, whatever it is that might be the need, he is already used to hearing my voice. Oh, I'm getting ready to hurt somebody's feelings. Some of us not getting prayers answered because the Lord might not be familiar with who you are. Mm-mm. Who is that calling me? Who is that asking me for $500 to pay their bills? I haven't heard that voice. But when he's used to hearing you, telling him how good he is, telling him how wonderful he is, the Bible says if you delight yourself in the Lord, that you can ask anything of him. And so the problem is many of us are asking, but we haven't done any delighting. Whoops. And I'm moving on. And so you need to practice what you preach. If you're telling people they need to pray, you need to be the first one on your knees, Mm -hmm. especially leaders. If you're saying you need this particular lifestyle, according to the word of God, they should be able to see it in your life. The Y stands for yield not to temptation. I grew up hearing that song. The Bible says it in his words so plain that we have to learn how to pull down strongholds and we have to cast down imaginations. And what might be a temptation to me may not be a temptation to you. But this year, whatever had you bound last year, this year, you need to tell yourself, I'm not giving in to that. Mm -mm. Come on, soak it in real quick. Just breathe in and out. I know it's a lot. I know it's heavy today, but we're going to have a better year this year because we are looking in our own lives. We're sweeping around our own porches. We are taking care of our own skeletons because those things that get on your nerves the most are usually things that you've dealt with. Or things that you're dealing with. Come on. Somebody say, but the Bible says, but he who the son says free is free indeed. If you know what it took for you to come out of what you were in, you'll have mercy on someone else. I know it's difficult. I'm in a place every day where I have to learn how to extend what was extended to me. And of course, there are moments where we have to say enough is enough. But Lord, have mercy, Jesus. I'm so glad he didn't give up on me. When you are tempted, you have got to learn how to apply the word on top of that temptation. There is nothing in this world that is more important 
than our Savior and making it into heaven to live with him throughout eternity. Let that soak in for a moment. There is nothing more important, no job, no person, no title, status, nothing is more important than making it in to see the Lord. And I'm making a conscious effort to make sure that I'm living a kingdom life. Are we perfect? No way. Will we ever be? No way. But we can do better than we did before. I promise you we can. A new year is not to repeat what you came out of. A new year is not to step back into what you were doing that was not correct. But if he graced you with a new year, if you on this live right now, you need to be saying, God, I thank you because she's talking to me. I've got my life, my health and my strength. No one's helping me to walk. No one has to talk for me. No one has to help me breathe. He gave you more time to complete that that you have not finished or start what you never did. Oh, God, yield not to temptation. Your temptation could be something as small as you don't tithe. You're tempted to spend your money elsewhere. Maybe you don't believe in it. Study God's word. Get a better understanding. Maybe your temptation is a human being. Maybe you have lustful desires. Maybe you cannot let that man or woman go. And you know it's not good for your body, your mind, or your spirit. But yet you can't let them go because you like what they do. Mm, I'm looking right into this. Oh, I'm looking right into this computer. Because somebody right now is saying, ouchie, ouchie, ouchie. Mm -hmm. Maybe you just don't know how to turn your plate over and fast and pray. You need a life of discipline this year. You need to learn how to be disciplined. The Lord gives us everything that we need and anything that we have. Check this. It can become a sin if it's not done in moderation. If it's not done correctly, it becomes a sin. It is what it is. Anything can become a habit and it can become a temptation. And in that, it becomes a sin. Yield not to temptation this year. Some of us know the things that have us bound, but we, we don't want to let go. If you're unable to do it on your own, find you an accountability partner. Find somebody that was successful in the area where you're struggling. Mm, that was good. Find an accountability partner that, that is successful or was successful in the area where you're struggling. The problem with that is we don't want anybody to know what's going on with us. Find somebody you trust. Everybody is not somebody that's out to get you. Everybody is not your enemy. There are some people that would love to help you through, but you have got to stop being so selfish. You have to stop being so hidden and learn to come out and say, it's me. It's me, oh Lord. Somebody would love to help you through. So happy new you. The happy stands for have a plan. Pray daily. Practice what you preach. Yield not to temptation. H, you need to have a plan. A, apply the plan. P, pray daily. The other P is practice what you preach and why. Yield not to temptation. Y'all got that? And then the end, never quit. I know last year was rough. Just about everyone that I came in contact with was struggling with something. They said 2019 was worse than 2018. But although we wanted to give up, we cannot quit. Now that we're in a new decade, God has given us extra strength. You made it through the worst days. You made it through the worst of times. So what you go through now, you've got to have that bounce back spirit 
And I decree and declare that you will not quit. This is not the year to quit. Come on, tell yourself, I can't, I can't stop, won't stop. I will not stop. Never quit. Whatever goes on in your life from January to December, don't quit. Come on, tell yourself, never quit. When people are ridiculing you, don't quit. When you feel you're at the end of the rope, don't quit. When, when your strength is, is just, it's just gone. The Bible says that he, his strength is made perfect in our weakness, but you can't quit. Never quit. I don't care what the enemy throws your way because you'll be the one standing anyway, according to the word of God, when the wicked even my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh. It says they stumbled. It didn't say anything about me. So that means I was still standing. But if I quit, I won't get to see the victory that I've already won. Come on, never quit. That's it. I got to bounce back in my spirit. The E in new is explore new options. This is the year to explore new options. Come on, as a matter of fact, somebody invite somebody right here. This is where it's getting ready to get good. Explore new options. Listen, come closer. What you did last year, that's cool. That's fine. But now it's time to start something new. It's time for you to explore. Can I help you understand what that word means? Thank you. It means to investigate, study. It means to analyze. It means to look into. Remember, this is the year of clear vision. You need to look into some new things. You need to look into what else is inside of me that I need to share with the world. Okay? Once you do that, you need to explore new avenues, new places, new people, and new things. You need to have a noun strategy. People, places, things. You need a noun strategy. I need new people. I need to explore new places. And I need to explore new things. Last year was last year. 2018, 17, 16, 15, those years are gone. Now that you have a whole new year, I don't even think we grasp that um, as much as we should. We just be like, happy new year. But listen, if you keep doing the same stuff, you're going to end up with the same things. And your mind needs to expand to where God is taking you. Somebody needs to hear your voice. Somebody needs to hear your song. Someone needs to read your book. Someone needs to take advantage of your ministry. What you have to offer a graphic artist. You might be a ghost writer. You, whoever you are. I mean, your intercessory ministry, it's coming up. You need a now strategy. Not just new, but now. You need new people. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get that in your spirit. New places and new things. The problem is, and I'm, let me get comfortable because I'm getting ready to hurt somebody. And I know they be getting mad. They be getting hurt. But I love you. Mwah. Let me let y'all know I love you. The problem is we get so comfortable with who's in our life that we don't allow anyone else in. And somebody else might be able to carry you further than the ones you've been with. But because you're so comfortable with them, but because that's the way it's been, and the worst thing you can say in your life is, it's always been like this. Can I help you understand? That's the problem. It's not supposed to keep being like this. I feel like I'm in church. I got to take off my watch. It's not supposed to keep being like this. There's more to you. There's more to life than this. The Apostle Paul says, everywhere I look is trouble. There's, there's trouble on the left, trouble on the right. And, 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 and I've been persecuted. I, I, I've been talked about. Just everywhere. 
there has to be a better life. But when you look at the beginning of that scripture, he says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels. You are treasure. And the only way it's going to be revealed, some things have to be pulled out. There's some things that have to be pulled out. And every piece that's in that treasure box doesn't always remain there. Some things have to be discarded because they're of no use. And then some things have to be filed away in another place because they're so valuable. But because we don't know how to separate who's in our life and the places and the things, we just let them all run together. We just let them all blend in together. And we have no idea how to separate where God is trying to take us. Yeah, Candace, there's more to life than this. Yeah, we're going to have trouble, but I'm not going to be troubled on every side every day because I'm going to learn how to utilize the tools that God has given me. Who am I talking to? You felt like you've been in a rut for the last 8, 10 years, the last 20 years of your life, and now you like, okay, I'm on fire. I'm ready to do it. you got to apply these principles. So never quit. Explore new options. Go to new places. Go to museums. Travel. Save money and go see a place you've never seen before. And this is not just for couples. Y'all know how I am about my single people. Learn to live and do you, boo. I live a good life, man. Until God desires to change it, I do whatever I want according to God's word and according to his way. Explore something new. Get out of the house. Live a little bit. I know y'all over there going, Lord, have mercy. N-E-W. The W stands for worry less and worship more. Woo! As a matter of fact, if you're worshiping, you can't worry, period. Worry less this year. So many people are losing their mind. I'm glad, Shaniqua. Praise the Lord. Come on, Shaniqua. I'm glad I'm talking to you. I want to see you. I want to see you succeed this year. I want you out of the rut. You hear me? You're coming up and you're coming out this year. I declare it. Your life will change if you apply this. And if you get in God's word and stay there, never quit. Okay, I'm back. If you are worshiping, you cannot be worrying, not at the same time. And so you need to spend more time in worship than you do worrying. Do you know what worship is? When you worship Yahweh, Yahshua, Emmanuel, God with us, the creator of the universe, nothing else matters. When you engulf yourself in the deity of who God is, when you let go of everything that's going on in the world, in that moment, it's just you and him. There are moments that I forget what day it is. I'm in my closet laid out. I forget what time it is. I'm on my way to a meeting and there's times that I'm, I'm running a little late because I get engulfed in the presence of the Lord. There's times that I'm driving and I have to pull over. Oh yeah, I don't just do this at home, in my car, you know, wherever I am. When I come here to my office, it is God, I love you. I bless you. I thank you. It could have been another way. And before I know it, I'm engulfed in worship. Now, granted, I might be having an awful day. I might be having a moment. But when I start to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, nothing else matters. Israel Houghton says it best. He says, nothing else matters just to be in your presence, just to be in the presence of the Lord. I don't have a worry. The Bible says in Matthew, why are you worrying about what you will eat and where you will sleep and what you will wear? Don't you know that I take care of the lilies in the field? I take care of the fowl in the air. Don't you know what you mean to me? Don't you know who you are? You are my creation. I made you. I breathed into you. I am your God. And the problem may not go away. 
at that moment. But your mind will go to where it needs to go. Even when the problem's not gone, your mind can go where God is. What a mighty God we serve. What a privilege it is to carry everything to the Lord in prayer and worship. So never quit. Explore new options. Worry less and worship more. And now we're ready for the you. I wish y'all would just come on, throw some hearts up. Come on, let's take a break. Before we get to Y-O-U, let's just thank God. Come on, slip up your hands in the presence. This is the first live for the new year. I feel so great to share this live with you. Just worship him right there. Just throw your hands up. Just say, Lord, I thank you. Just say, Lord, I bless you. If you haven't told him today who he is, just take a moment right now and say, God, you are majestic. You are holy. You are God. Beside you, there is none other. You are everything I need. You are the way maker. You're the miracle worker. You're the promise keeper. You're the light in the darkness. That is who you are. And if you would do that on a daily basis, worry less, worship more. The U stands for you matter. It's just that simple. You have taken care of everybody else for the last, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to say 10 years. Everybody else has been first and you continue to be last. There is nothing wrong with putting you first. There is nothing wrong with self-care. There is nothing wrong with saying, no, I can't. There is nothing wrong with saying, no, I won't. There is nothing wrong with saying this day is dedicated to me. Tell somebody I matter. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give it back to you. You matter. So if you matter, what are the things you desire this year? What do you really want? What has God spoken to you? Y'all better stop that. Y'all better stop talking about he a healer. And y'all better stop talking about he's a wonderful savior and he's faithful. Because I'll forget the rest of them. And I'll just go in. Because I know where he brought me from. I know where I've been. I know what's been going on in my life. I know last year that I almost gave up. I know that our family went through a very hard time. I know that even going through grief counseling, it's been very rough on my life. But I'm learning more about me, and that's why I'm sharing with you. Losing your mother will, 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 will about kill you, if the truth be told, especially when you got a good one. And it's been rough, but God is a healer. God is wonderful, and you better believe it. He is faithful. So you matter. And so since you matter, you need to, O, learn that opportunities await you. Come on, that's a good one. Opportunities await you. In order for you to have a better you in the new year, you need to seize your opportunities. Seize your opportunities. Not see S-E-I-Z-E, seize your opportunities. There are opportunities out here for everybody. The problem is, Lady Plata, that people want what you have. They want the opportunities I have. They want the opportunities Joe Blow has and Bishop Bishop T.T. and Tutu and First Lady Yaya and Baba. Grab hold of your opportunities. How do you know when they're yours? The places where you are drawn to. The places and the people and the things that you can't get away from that line up with the word of God. Let God open the doors for you. You don't open the doors for him. Seize your opportunities. When you see place where you need to be that will help you in the area that God has gifted you. You don't have to knock the door down. You don't have to belittle anybody to seize an opportunity. You don't have to curse anyone out. You don't have to be jealous of them. You just show up and watch what God does for you. Seize your opportunities. Be the best you that you can be. Utilize the gifts that God has already given to you. And I'm going to tell you something that I did. I shared with my elder friend this morning. 
And people laughed at me, but I'm going to testify before I give you this last letter. I was in a place and there was a pastor I overheard talking and it's been well over 12 years ago. And I heard him talking to another pastor and he said, I want to do a women's conference. We hadn't done a women's conference at our church yet. And I really want to reach broken women. I overheard the conversation and I quickened in my spirit. Not so much that I wanted the opportunity to speak, but I knew where I had come from. And because I lived a life of being broken at a certain time from women, I knew I was the proper candidate. I was walking to my car, to the parking lot, and the Holy Spirit would not let me get to my car. I turned around and I looked the pastor in the eye and I said, I heard what you were saying and I believe I can help you. So I'm getting teary-eyed now because I didn't know that that was an opportunity that was about to open many doors for my life. International doors from state to state, from city to city, that God opened many doors for me just for being obedient, just for seizing an opportunity. And I told the pastor very humbly yet boldly, I said, I have what you need. I've been where you're trying to get the women out of, would you allow me to help you? And some people overheard my conversation and I tell this story, um, I've told it before. And I heard little conversation like, who does she think she is? What does she mean she has what it takes? She don't have nothing. Where's she been? Who's she gonna help? But deep down I knew what God had done for me. I knew how I had been broken and I didn't want anybody else to have to go through what I had been through. And so I seized the opportunity. Hold on. This is going to bless you not to get a platform, not to make my name great, not to get an honorarium, not just to have a place to say I went, but I wanted to be a help. I didn't have any ulterior motives. I didn't want anything else. I just wanted what I heard. And from that moment, it built a relationship and even more relationships to do what Cynthia Diggs does. From that came the women in ministry. From that came the women's preachers class. From that came many, many women's conferences where God allowed me to speak 50, 60 times in a year, where people were trying to block and stop. Don't call her. Who is she? We don't know her. She not in this denomination. She don't have this. She don't dress like that. She don't do this. She don't do that. But guess what? I do what God wants. I want to scream, but I can't because I'm in the library. I wasn't trying to do it like them. I wasn't trying to say it like them. I just wanted to do it God's way. And I seized the opportunity with the obstacles, with the people ridiculing me, with people falling off, coming in for the wrong reason, trying to get close to me just to get a platform, just to get an opportunity. I did it with all of that attached to me, but I kept my eyes on Jesus. Coleman, it hasn't always been easy. That's why I try so hard to bring everybody else up and help bring them out. Can I give you one more nugget? But sometimes we want more for others than they want for themselves. That's why this live is for you. Happy new you. So the N is for never quit. The E, explore new options. The W, worry less, worship more. The Y, you matter. The O, opportunities await you. And then the U, use new resources. It kind of goes with the same guidelines of opportunities await you and season the moment. You have to understand to use new resources.
Resources are a supply of money, materials, staff, and other assets that can be drawn on and out of to function properly. To function properly. There are so many dysfunctions because we will not step out and use new resources. We want all the old stuff. Some of us haven't bought new anything in year, new clothes. Some of us haven't changed our hairstyle in 10, 20 years. But I'm talking about resources. It says a supply of money. There are programs out here that will help fund what's inside of you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm looking into some more stuff myself because cause, y'all fickle. And, you know, people, they, they'll give to you once a year. But ministry cost, and when you under bridges, and when you you teaching people outside in the cold and taking blankets and pillows when it's cold, and when you taking ice cold water and food to people when it's hot, and folk don't want to help you, they like that's your ministry. And I've asked people who do some of the same stuff, and they like, well, we doing the same thing. Okay, great. So you understand where I am. So why not help me? And then I can turn around and help you. But let me come a, come a little bit closer. We almost done. I'm getting ready to log off. People don't want to help you if they think you're going to get to the top before them. Or if they think your ministry is greater than theirs. Or if they think you're going to get a bigger platform than them, they don't want to help you. They don't want to speak well of you. They don't want to show up for you. And they don't want to sow into you. You know what? Somebody need, somebody, somebody, somebody need to send me $5. I just preached the whole sermon. Because they won't help you if they think that their help is going to make you better than them. That is why God does it without their help. So that he gets the credit and not them. I've asked people, um, can you donate a case of water? I'm out here with the homeless. Well, well, that's what we're doing at our church. Great. So you probably have what I need at your church. So at this moment, can you help me? Guess what? Shook the dust. And I kept on trucking, baby. I've asked, can you donate to my Christmas event? Well, we're doing something that outreach too. Good. So you understand what I'm doing and we can partner together. Mm -mm. And little do I know, I had to learn the hard way. The Lord didn't want me partnering with everybody because people were going to be running around saying, look what I did for Diggs. Look how I helped Diggs. Diggs wouldn't be doing that if I hadn't did this and that. And so God gets all the glory because nobody but him did this. Oh, God. Oh, Lord, I need another drink. One moment. And so, you got to learn how to use new resources. There's money out there. It says it's a supply of money, materials, materials that are needed. There are people that are waiting to donate materials that you may need based on what you do. You need to learn how to pick up the phone and ask. You need to Google. You need to show up at some of these places, some of the schools, hospitals, museums, events, uh-oh, events. You need to learn how to support somebody besides yourself. Here, Carlita, baby, here you go. Here, take, get you a drink. Mm, there you go. Get you a drink. There you go. You need to learn how to support somebody besides yourself. Sometimes we can't utilize new resources because nobody knows who we are. Nobody knows where we are because you won't come out the house until it's your time to dance. You won't come out the house until it's your time to preach. You won't come out the house until it's your time to sing. And then you want 50 million people to share your flyer when you won't help anybody. To God be the glory. Oh, I forgot where I was. Materials are out there, but you don't know about them because you won't help anybody. You're not the only one that can preach, sing, dance, do graphic work, do administrative work. You're not the only one that can pray. 
You're not the only one that can do events. There's promoters, event planners that truly have the Holy Ghost and are not just trying to steal people's money. There's materials out here. Maybe it's not working because you're using the same plan, the same people, visiting the same places. Maybe your circle is this small because all you do is fellowship with the same folk. Maybe you put the same people on your program every year. Now, granted, if it's not broken, don't mess it up. But you need to learn how to utilize more resources. Step out of your comfort zone so that God can get the glory. He has more glory to get, so that means you have more work to do. Okay, I'm done. There's money out here for you. There's, And I'm speaking to the Black Academy of Arts and Letters right now. I want to do something really special for Mr. Curtis King in the coming future. I, I, I wonder, is he watching? I wish somebody would let him hear this. Mr. Curtis King has been such a wonderful example, and he's opened so many doors for people. And I am one of those that likes to give back to the community and through through the benefit concerts, through going under the bridges, through working in shelters, through every little way that I can. I go support who I can. I want us to do something for the Black Academy of Arts and Letters. So he didn't pay me to do this. I, prom I promise you he didn't pay me. First of all, support. Support. A lot of, a lot of artists, they go there and, and, and they get heard for the first time. Let's learn to support businesses that support us. OK, and not just always look for a handout, not just look for someone to let us come and perform for free, not just want to do everything for free. And then I'm going to hurt you and then I'm going to come back and quit charging for every little thing. Sometimes you've got to learn when to give and when it's time to receive. There's resources out there, but sometimes you're the resource for somebody else. Ooh, he's speaking today. I love you, Lord. And I bless your holy name. Stop always looking for a handout. Learn to hold your hand out. And learn to be the blessing for somebody else. And so there's money out here. There's materials. It says staff. You need to get the right people around you. Your staff is very important, meaning the people that know you best, those that can work closely with you, that understand your vision, those that understand your mission and can help you carry it out. You've got to be careful who you allow to work with you and not be comfortable with them because it's not just tenure and talent, but we've got to learn that it has to be ordained of God. Make sure you have the right people that are close to you. And that, that's, in the, that's in the noun form, the staff. But remember in the Bible, it says, My, thy rod and thy staff comfort me. It's not also the people that are around you, but also what's in you, what's in your hand. What, what, what do you have? What, what is the comfort in, in your life? The Lord, thy rod and thy staff. He has something that can help protect you, the material. The material, the protection, but you have to make sure that you are around the right ones because some of us have people around us and they are keeping us from getting to where we need to be. Come here a lot. Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't on, I, I, not, I'm not trying to do a Bible study today. Sometimes it can be your own family that's causing you to miss out and to lose on what's supposed to be a blessing to you and then it becomes a burden. So... The money, the materials, the staff, and other assets that will help you to function effectively. You got to have something to draw from. And if you don't have the right people around you, if you don't have the right things, and if you're not visiting the right places, it's not going to be Happy New Year. It's going to be sad old you. And I don't know about you, but I'm tired of New Year's with the same me. I wish y'all would talk to me for a moment because I'm about to log off. 
If this helped you, just say you helped me. Just say, girl, your first live was more than I ever expected. Happy New You. It's not just a new year. It's changing old habits, breaking old curses, coming out of dark places, stepping into the light, receiving what you deserve. Oh, yeah. People say we don't deserve nothing. That's not true according, according to God's word. I come that you may have life and that more abundantly. Behold, I do a new thing. Don't you perceive it? I'm, I'm going to make streams in the middle of the desert. That means God wants to do what's never been done. That means it might be hard, but it's not impossible. If he can put a stream in a desert, that means he can push you up when you've been knocked down. That means he can cause wealth in places where you've been poor. I mean, he can bring it to pass at age 40, 50, 60, 16, 17, 21, 33, 40, 99. He's a God that has unlimited power. And this is the year for you to tap in. For your business to flourish, for your ministry to flourish, to come where it needs to be. Every preacher is not foul. Every first lady is not mean. Every business is not bogus. Everybody not scheming. There are some great people out here. And you can only witness on the level that you serve. Oops, I need another drink. You know why some of us think everybody bad? Because we ain't came up yet. Because we still cheating and stealing in line. And so we think everybody's like that. But when you walk in integrity, when you speak in integrity, and when you live an integral life as close as you can to the word of God, you can see the good in somebody else. Well, I'm wishing you the best. Happy new you ever. And I'm praying for you. I, when I say I'm praying for you, I'm praying for you. I pray for you often. I'm not just on here because I don't have anything to do. I have something to do. I have somewhere to go. I have some things to do. I have new people, new places, and new things. And so I don't just jump on here just to hear myself. This takes time. And when you really want to do a live right, it takes prayer. It takes supplication. Because what you put out, you need to make sure that you're also taking in. And so I'm very conscious about what I say and about what I serve. God gave me happy new you. I'm already working on my 2020 planner. I'm already looking towards a better year. I have my goals for this year. I have my goals, my bucket list. I have lifetime goals. I have in my book already my healthy habit goals. It's already filled out. Look, look, I'm, I'm not just playing with y'all. I'm not telling you things that I'm not living. I have daily goals, one to two, three times a week goals. I have one, two times a month goals and one to three times a year goals. I'm not just trying to preach what I'm not living. I want to be a better me because when mama left, it showed me how fast. Life can be taken away from you and how precious it is. I've been to a whole bunch of funeral services, but it's something about watching your mom take her last breath. And it taught me the importance of not procrastinating, not putting off today what I can do today, not tomorrow, but today. So I'm real, real cognizant about what I say and about what I do. And I'm glad to have you as my family and my Facebook friends. But I want us to come up this year. I want us to come out of ruts. I want us to come out of being stuck and trapped because that is of the enemy. The Lord desires that we live a fulfilled life. Now, will problems come? Of course. Will deaths come? Of course. Will there be trials? Of course. But if you apply these principles, have a plan, pray daily, practice what you preach, 
You hear me? Yield not to temptation. Never quit. Explore new options. Worry less and worship more. Know that you matter. Know that opportunities await you. And use new resources. I promise you, you'll see a difference. I am a person that has noticed major differences and change in my physical appearance, but also in my spiritual walk. I've noticed a change. Financially, I'm more cognizant of where to spend, how to spend. I listen, where to sow my seed. I'm a grace giver. Yes, I am. I'm not rich. I just listen to God. And when he tells me to do it, I do it. And he makes good on his word. And so this is the year for you to be a better you. I'm praying for you and I'm looking forward to major testimonies this year that nobody did it but God. So instead of just being concerned about a happy new year, thank God for a happy new you. For this is the year of change. Yes, it's the year to see better, but it's also the year to receive better. It's not just about seeing clearly. Don't get me wrong. We're going to see better. But in order to have better, you need to make those things that didn't work, work first. Don't just hop in here this year thinking that you can just start over new. Mend those relationships that are broken. Go back and fix the things that need to be fixed. Just because you go back doesn't mean you have to stay back. But make sure that you mend the things that need to be mended and then move forward to a happy new you. The Holy Spirit will be your guide. He's your teacher. He's already told you what you need to do. This is just confirmation. And it is your reminder that if God be for you, who can be against you? So join me each Friday at 5 p.m. for Live at 5. This one was different because I was making sure I heard exactly what God wanted me to say. Live at 5, the first Friday of each month. I'll be with you 11 more times this year if God says the same. And we'll be talking about everything and anything that's relevant to a happy new you. Have an awesome awesome year. And I look forward to seeing you in a service real soon. God bless you.